Hi, I'm Claudia St. John. I'm the president of Affinity HR Group, and we are your HR partner and resource. Recently, we held a webinar that was highly, uh, highly attended um, on the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. We did receive so many questions during that webinar that we weren't able to get to all of them during the course of the webinar. So I'm taking this time to go through and try and answer them as best I can uh, in this video. Also, since that time, the uh, CARES Act, Federal CARES Act has been passed, which provides a lot of uh, low interest loans uh, um, and other benefits, um, expanded unemployment uh, benefits to employees. So I'm going to try some of these questions actually overlap with the CARES Act as it was working through Congress. A lot of folks were getting news and, and picking up tidbits about what was going to be in that act. So to the best of my ability, I'm going to answer those as well. So I'm just going to get through to it. OK, so first of all, we had an employee who was ordered by his doctor to quarantine starting March 16th. Are they covered under the Families First Act since it doesn't go into effect until April 2nd? Actually, no, they are not. The act does not go into effect and does not cover anybody under any leave prior to its official start date, which is actually April 1st. The original notices indicated April 2nd, but in the DOL guidance that came out on the 21st of Mar or 25th of March, uh, that indicated that it would go into effect on April 1st, not April 2nd. So any leave, uh, quarantines, uh, family leave, anything folks that are out on prior to April 1st is not covered. You start the clock effective April 1st with those leaves. Do employees have to supply documentation if a doctor recommends testing or if they've been asked to quarantine by the health department? If possible, I would definitely request that. Usually, if a doctor has prescribed a quarantine or a test, you should have some documentation. If you don't have that documentation, you should not require that your employee go back to the doctor in order to obtain it because under this pandemic, we do not want people who are potentially uh, carrying this virus wandering around in the community in medical facilities, especially when those facilities are currently overly taxed uh, with their responding. Um, do I have an employee? I, I have an employee who is off and reaching out to other employees stating that he tested positive. Can I require him to provide proof of that fact? I would definitely reach out to that employee and I would ask them what the current status of their health is. Um, you are allowed to do that, not normally, but under the EEOC guidance recently, we can ask employees if they are um, suffering from the effects or symptoms of coronavirus. And if they are stating that they've been tested, I would ask for that verification. Um, again, as in the previous comment, they should have those documentations by providers who have either quarantined them or um, issued uh, an exam, a test for them. Uh, so if they had that, they should get that if possible. But again, I would not require that they go to a medical facility to get that verification. Um, under the sick leave, under the Paid Sick Leave Act, is the employer required to pay employees who are under a collective bargaining agreement? Um, I would check with the collective bargaining agreement, and I would also check with your legal counsel. Usually, collective bargaining agreements uh, have to comply with federal law unless the collective bargaining agreement itself is better, richer than what is provided for under federal law. So to the extent that federal law is richer than is covered by a collective bargaining agreement, typically the federal law will supersede the collective bargaining agreement. But if the opposite is true and employees are covered under a richer set of benefits under their collective bargaining agreement, the collective bargaining agreement would rule. But again, I would check your legal counsel. I would check the bargaining agreement um, and evaluate that independently based uh, and not based solely on my advice um, and this answer. Um, I was told we could withhold the payroll tax, each payroll, uh, to, in order to pay for this. Yes, that is a provision. This is how you get reimbursed. So to the extent that you are withholding and paying FICA payroll taxes uh, on a regular basis, you can use those payments that you have set aside to cover your costs for providing both the emergency sick leave and the emergency paid leave uh, as necessary. Now, if you don't pay that much in payroll taxes and your liability under this, you're a small employer, your liability under this exceeds what you withhold, then you can withhold that amount and apply for a credit from your future taxes or you can request a cash advance. Uh, I do believe that has been clarified a little bit through the Small Business Administration, uh, but you should 
should also check the provisions of the IRS or the Treasury Department website as they have provided a lot of guidance on this uh, relating to the Families First Response Act. So uh, Google IRS Family First Corona Response Act in order to get clarification on that point. Um, do employees have to use their bank time or could the employer cover it? Uh, well, if they are taking the um, emergency sick leave or the emergency paid leave, uh, you cannot require that they use their bank time. In fact, the law requires that they use the federal guaranteed um, benefit first before accessing their paid leave. So if that question is asking whether or not you can uh, take your banked leave first before you go to your federal paid leave. No, you, you need to use your federal paid leave first. It's up to the employer. If the employee is out um, and uh, uh, out for the two thirds um, uh, time taking care of a child who is not at school or in daycare, um, that's only two thirds of pay. So you can talk with your employee and decide if you're, yourself if you would want to allow some level of coverage if they have PTO bank that could bring them back up to a full level of pay. Of course, that's only for folks who cannot work from home. If an employee can work from home, the federal family leave uh, benefit does not apply. Is the 50 person limit for hardship company based or location based? Uh, again, I, I would check with your legal entity to see how you're filed. Uh, usually it is company based and not location based. Uh, but if you have different companies that all operate under different EINs and have different payrolls, that would indicate that you probably would have separate entities there for calculating your total uh, 50 employee for hardship. Should 401ks be withheld uh, from these sick leave payments? I don't actually know the answer to this. Um, I know that uh, the provisions of the act allow for the employer to get reimbursed for any health insurance expenses. I really don't know how 401k uh, withholdings would apply. I would check with your accountant um, uh, before you make any decisions or do anything regarding, regarding 401k payments. Um, regarding daycare, if we offer an employee to work a different shift because their spouse is home in the evening, can they refuse this? Uh, you cannot force an employee to either take or not take that leave if they otherwise qualify for it. But I would strongly encourage that you try to work with that employee because they will get a better benefit. They will get their full pay if they are able to coordinate that leave. Importantly, we also just learned that employees can take intermittent leave. So if employees are home, if uh, children are home because their schools have closed down because of remain in work or order or a quarantine, you can share that leave time with a spouse or other caregiver. And if you are able to work three days a week and your uh, husband is able to work two days a week, uh, then you would be allowed to take uh, just those two days off um, under the intermittent component of the family uh, emergency leave. Um, does a state order for non-essential employees to stay at home qualify as a governmental quarantine or isolation under the under the um, uh, Family Families uh, First Act? Actually, no. So, if you are shut down, or if the employee is unable to work because of a state or local mandate requiring a stay at home and they cannot work from home, then they would apply for unemployment. So they are now kicked over to unemployment. You cannot use this Federal Leave Act because of work slowdowns or shutdowns that are the result of a state or local or federal, perhaps, mandated quarantine or shutdown. Um, can we lay off employees due to them being unable to work from home or do we legally need to keep them on payroll to keep them eligible for emergency sick leave? No, if you cannot accommodate that employee, you don't have the work for them or they cannot get to work because of a close down, you can lay them off and then they would be eligible for the expanded uh, unemployment benefits that are covered under the new CARES Act. You may want to consider, however, whether you want to continue to cover them for health insurance because there is no provision for covering health insurance. They would automatically get covered under COBRA and therefore that they would need to pay normally their own premium. So you may want to consider if you can afford to pay the employer portion of COBRA while they're out on leave. 
if our city has a shelter in place order, but we have employees who cannot work from home, can we offer them to use their vacation sick pay if they want to? Yes, of course. Again, rubber bands and bubble gum. You offer whatever you can. Let them use whatever they've gotten banked. Maybe you just have a few employees that this applies to and you can offer them an extended leave that you would not normally offer. Again, whatever benefits you offer just in this emergency are just for this emergency. You're not setting a precedent. So you can treat them differently than you treat others provided it's not based on their race, religion, sex, creed, gender, disability, age. So as long as you're treating them because of their, their business work circumstances in light of this, then you can craft whatever you want in order to make this work for everybody. And again, different employees are going to face different circumstances based on whether they can work at home, the duties of their job, whether they're covered by one of these, these containment orders, whether they've been mandated uh, to be quarantined. I mean, all of us are going to have different um, circumstances. And so take those into consideration when you're crafting your response. Uh, for the Emergency Family Medical Expansion Act pay that is triggered when an employee needs to stay home and care for children with schools that are closed, do we need to pay the extended FMLA to employees that have alternative child care, i.e. a step spouse who pay stays at home? You only need to pay them to the extent that they need to stay home in order to take care of that child. So if you have a worker whose spouse is a stay-at-home mom and that um, worker or stay-at-home dad and that employee is home, uh, you do, are not required to pay for someone else to also stay home. Now, the tricky part of that is how do you validate that? How do you confirm that? And you can't deny it, so you need to be kind of uh, careful in how you administer that. We have not gotten enough guidance on this yet. And again, both on the Families First Act and on the CARES Act, they are continuing to roll out guidance and answer Q&As as those come up. So keep checking those sites in order to get your questions answered. How do you avoid employees, employees abusing extended pay because they have kids? Uh, how do you identify the employees that are eligible? Again, I, I think this requires a lot of conversation. Um, what you should require is some sort of form of verification that the school district or daycare has closed down. Uh, virtually uh, every school district is able to provide this information. It would also be in the news if it's a county order and you live in that county, that's easily document, you know, you can document that just by Googling it in most instances. So you would at least want that provision. And then how you figure out how to coordinate it with another care provider is really uh, yours to just work through with each employee. Do we have to cover all health insurance exp expenses during the emergency FMLA? Yes, you do. And it's 100% reimbursed by the federal government when you do so. So again, um, you can, any health insurance costs that you incur for anybody who's out on either provision of the Families First Act is reimbursable by the federal government. If my employer wants to lay off people prior to 4-1 in order to avoid being compliant with this, how do we address this with employees? Um, uh, carefully. Um, so uh, if they're laying them off prior to this, but the thing is if they laid them off after this, the minute those employees are laid off, whether it's now or whether it's April 15th, those provisions of the Family Care Act don't don't apply because if they're not actively employed, then they are not covered under these acts. So those layoffs can occur anytime. I would not recommend employers firing people now uh, in advance of this act coming into place. Also because it covers a relatively small number of people, only those who are tending to childcare and those who really are sick with coronavirus or testing, being tested for coronavirus or caring for somebody who is a confirmed coronavirus patient. So it's not like the whole workforce is going to be covered by this and it's reimbursed. I would encourage employers not to lay off their workforce um, until they kind of see what they have to deal with. And then at that point, if they have to lay them off, they can lay them off and not comply with this law. Uh, we have someone out of work right now because of the coronavirus. Is this not going to be reimbursed because it's before April 1st? Correct. They are not reimbursed until after April 1st or after. What if people make less than 75,000 separate or combined? So I think this is talking about the CARES Act. There is an individual stipend that's being sent out to all Americans, an individual up to $1,200 and a jointly for those employees or those individuals who are earning less than $75,000 $75, or less. 
or couples who earn as a couple up to uh, $150,000 or less. Plus there are um, child credits of up to $500 per child. Anybody making less than $75,000 is going to qualify for this stipend provided they have uh, been paying their, their taxes um, over the years, recently, last year, for example. Are furloughed employees eligible for unemployment benefits if they are receiving partial pay? Unemployment is administered on a state basis. States have different rules about what they look at when calculating uh, the unemployment benefit. Some will deduct what they will offer based on whether somebody has some partial pay. Some people cannot apply if they have partial pay, and some people partial pay does not even affect their benefit. So it just depends. I would check with your state's provisions. And again, many of those requirements, um, states are currently figuring out how to change in order to accommodate this. So even though there might have been the rule in the past that you would get a reduced benefit, um, say last year, that may not be the rule now. So you want to check in with your unemployment boards. Uh, if a furloughed worker goes and gets a job at a grocery store, can the employee that was furloughed still collect? Again, check. Um, we are not closed, but business is reduced due to temporary closure. Any benefits for us? Yes, you should check out the CARES Act. There are a number of provisions in there, either through low interest loans that can be forgiven if you maintain your workforce, um, and also uh, additional uh, loans that are, that are available for just this sort of thing. That's basically what the CARES Act does. It takes care of businesses who are struggling to close down because of um, or, or trying to make ends meet during the uh, coronavirus epidemic. Again, most of this relates to employers with fewer than 500 employees, but there are provisions under the act that cover um, up to 50% of wages with a maximum of $10,000 per individual. That would apply even to big, uh, more than 500 employee companies. Um, are these unemployment benefits available to independent contractors? Yes, there is a new provision that does extend uh, unemployment benefits to gig workers, independent contractors, freelance workers, those who normally cannot collect. And the benefit is 50% or half of the state's maximum uh, daily or maximum weekly benefit under unemployment plus $600 a week. So definitely this does cover them. If an employee is out due to a self-quarantine, can they make and take business calls and do emails by getting sick benefits? If an employee is out due to a quarantine um, and they are able to work from home, they cannot receive this benefit. So if they can work, they cannot collect this benefit. This benefit is only for those who cannot work from home. In order to take the tax credit, how do we apply for that and what documentation do we have to, to provide? Um, what you need to do, what I would recommend you do, is I would put a program or a coding in your um, payroll system so that when people are out on this program, uh, you are calculating and capturing how much of your payroll is covered by that and you are able to withhold your tax, your social security and payroll tax um, expenditures uh, in order to cover that amount. And again, talk with your a tax accountant in order to figure out um, how to go about doing that. Uh, if you have 15 employees and four of them will be out due to childcare, the Social Security tax withholding will not cover the cost of the two-thirds pay. Do you have to wait until quarterly refunds? Yes. Uh, well, no. You can apply for um, the uh, a, a refund, a tax credit, basically, on your taxes, your quarterly taxes, but also you can apply for funds for, through the Small Business Administration loans to cover that amount. So you should be checking um, with the Families First and the CARES Act to see what's available to you. And if you simply cannot afford to provide this benefit and you can document that doing so would, would cause a hardship and by hardship it would cause you know, significant, um, uh, if not uh, terminal uh, effects to your business, you can waive uh, providing that benefit. You should be able to very clearly, however, demonstrate that that's a financial burden. 
Does hazardous pay require during this time for those who are considered essential businesses? I have seen nothing about hazard pay. Um, I certainly don't think there is anything that speaks to that um, on the federal or state level as I have seen it. Um, your collective bargaining agreement, if you have one, may speak uh, more to that. And I know that certain businesses are offering hazard pay, for example, those who are uh, on the front lines, for example, janitorial sectors or healthcare workers uh, may be offering hazard pay to those who are putting themselves on the front line of keeping the rest of us safe. So something for you to consider. If they were laid off before the 1st of April, but you want to provide the benefit because it is reimbursed by the government, can you make it effective even if, if it's before the date? Yeah, you can, you can provide that benefit. It's your benefit to provide, and it would not be reimbursed by the federal government, but I would strongly recommend that you do that. That's the sort of thing, that's the kind of bubble gum and rubber bands that we can do for our employees at this moment in time. Um, is the unemployment benefit reimbursable? I don't really know what this means because unemployment benefits are typically paid for by state and federal governments, not by the employer. So they would not be reimbursable. They usually are covered as the individual's um, taxable income when filing for taxes uh, at the end of the year. So recognize that they will eventually need to pay taxes on those benefits, but not until um, it is uh, tax season next year to, to, to pay those taxes. Um, as part of the plan, will they refund the unemployment cost to an, em an, an employer needs to pay if they lay off workers? I don't, again, know what this is referring to. Um, it is possible that your assessment, your unemployment insurance assessment that you have to pay um, in order to cover the, your experiential rating for, for unemployment could go up under this. I haven't seen any clarification on that. You should keep, tra you know, keep track on that and, and, and check back with the IRS. Will we be required to provide poof, proof sorry, of meeting the requirements when paying sick pay for this act? Um, you will need to provide proof. Uh, I don't think you need to provide proof, but what I would do is make sure that you're capturing the amount that you're paying out in your coding so that when you run your payroll, you can show who's out on regular PTO versus who is out on this federal leave so that you can get correct reimbursement for that leave. Um, uh, how do garnishments play into these uh, payments? I really don't know. I usually, typically, if an employer, if an employee is receiving pay at some level and that garnishment legally is on there, then the garnishment would apply to the pay, whether it's PTO, normally whether it's PTO or whether it's regular pay. So you would expect it would apply to this as well. That said, I am not an attorney. I am not a tax accountant. I do not know. I am just an HR professional. So uh, you need to follow and pursue uh, both the court orders, the documents, and, and talk with your legal counsel. Do you have to take the paid sick leave all at once? Um, I know that the, um, that the, uh, the, um, sorry, my brain just froze. I know that the family leave does not need to be taken all at once, but the sick leave is for somebody who is either sick with coronavirus or under um, court orders to quarantine or being tested. So really, I can't really imagine how you would take that intermittently because it is for people who are out sick with this leave. Um, unless you are taking it to care for um, another person and that you may be able, if you're taking you know, your partial payment because you are taking care of somebody who has coronavirus, you may be able to take that intermittently. But if you are regularly being exposed to somebody who is covered, who has coronavirus, you shouldn't be going to work. So I, I can't really Im that Im imagine why you would take intermittent sick leave. If the employee takes sick leave, do they have to be out for at least a certain amount of time in honor for a recommended quarantine time? Um, usually those quarantines are specified by the medical provider or the Department of Health. Usually it's 14 days. That seems to be the incubation period that um, the CDC has been providing uh, to doctors and communities uh, for quarantine. Again, I would recommend that you check with the CDC guideline when doing anything in terms of allowing sick employees at your work, allowing them back 
back if they've been sick, documentation, how to keep your employees safe, how to clean um, your and disinfect your workplaces, and of course, uh, use the best in class social distancing. That's it for us. I hope this helps. Um, you know, we're going to get through it all. And in the meantime, uh, I hope if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email us at contact at affinityhrgroup.com. Check out our blog at affinityhr.com, affinityhrgroup.com forward slash blog, or call us at 877-660-6400. I hope you and everyone you know and care about and work with have a safe and productive work week. Take care.